What's up everybody, the Sammy's video production crew and I just got back from shooting on location at the Miami, Florida Zoo. We met our now good friend photographer and Nikon ambassador, Ron McGill, to shoot a short documentary piece about how photography can help save wildlife. While we were shooting with Ron, he told us how he loves his new Nikon Z9 and also shared with us a stunning video he shot with the Z9 called Wings of Asia. Check out this video and find out why Ron McGill only shoots Nikon and what he thinks about the Z9. I gotta tell you something. It is redefining photography for me. I wanna make this clear, you know, I never took a formal photography class, I never had any formal training, and I bought a camera and I just started shooting. And, you know, I couldn't afford to even to take photography classes. So what I did was I would buy a lot of the, the magazines, you know, popular photography, Shutterbug, stuff like that. And they always had these little lessons. And then they had these, these contests, you know, like your best shot, you know, $300 for your best shot. And, and photography for me is incredibly subjective. I try to tell people all the time, listen, the first person you need to please with your photograph is you. If you look at the photograph and you like it, it's a good photograph. I'm not saying it can't be made to be a better photograph, but you've got to like it first. Don't take photographs for other people. Take photographs for what you like. And I looked at a lot of these contest winners and I would look at it and go, I could do that. Or I could do this. I said, you know, and some of them would say, well, that's fantastic. That's deserving. But then others I say, who was the judge here? So it told me how subjective photography could be. So I started just trying to take, and then I started entering some of these contests. And I started winning a couple of them. I was like, whoa, I won a couple of these contests. And the whole mushroom exploded for me when I won, I was a winner in the Nikon International Contest. And that's a big contest. And by winning that contest, they provided me with thousands of dollars of Nikon equipment. And for me, that was just an absolute, like winning the lottery because now I had incredible equipment and I just became so engaged in it. And I used my equipment to take the images and then I started getting these images published and I, the people were accepting my papers and I was saying, and then I was doing presentations at schools and universities and I used these images, you know, and I could be up there talking. People don't want to hear talking heads, but when you come up with an image of a hippo exploding out of the water at you, people go, oh wow, you know, that's what you want. I'll tell you why I decided to go with Nikon because it is the most durable camera I've ever used. I'm not gonna mention the other brands that I've used, but I, and listen, when it comes to, to glass and things, a lot of them are, are, are very similar. But when it comes to durability, I had other brands and when I'm out in the field and I'm going through a rainforest and I'm banging my cameras around, you know, my ca there are people who have their cameras and they keep them on a shelf like a trophy and they keep them pristine. My cameras look like they fell out of a plane. And that's why I use Nikon because it falls out of a plane and it keeps working. I'll give you a classic example. I went up 120 feet up, sat in a nest with a harpy eagle photographing a harp eagle, but I'm up there with a chicken. I'm saying, I got to get a picture of myself doing this. So I put the thing on self timer and I balanced it on the nest and, I'm like, and I go like this and the thing fell over. A D5 fell 120 feet to the ground with a lens attached to it. I go, that's it. My camera's done. 120 feet. Went down there. <laughs> Baby, that thing kept on working beautifully. Not even a single problem. Whereas other cameras, they just broke. So the Z9 has redefined photography for me because as a wildlife photographer, one of the biggest aids that I need is an autofocus that is quick. You know, I'm not photographing a stationary model that says, I can tell, oh, turn to the left, move here a little bit. No, I'm finding a bird that's flying, a cheetah that's running, you know, a dolphin that's coming out of the water. I need to be able to point and not have to worry about something catching that. And this new autofocus system and this Z9 is the most mind-blowing autofocus I could ever have imagined. It has an eye focus that you have an eye focus for people and for animals. So you can set it for an eye focus for animals. And I'm feeling this bird is flying, a hawk is flying right at me. I said, no way those are all going to be in focus. Boom, 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 and they're all in focus right on the eye. I don't know how that machine does it, but I thank God for it every day. The other thing about the Z9 that's really great for me, I'm a fairly big guy. I'm 6'6", 235 pounds. I have fairly large hands. And the grip, you know, one of the things I used to love about the D5 was that it has a grip that, I, I thought the Nikon engineers came and measured my hands when they built that camera. I said, oh my God, no, there's never going to be a better camera for me. And then I had the Z cameras, which are great, but they were a little small for me, even when I had the, the, the grip on it. 
then comes the Z9, which is like just a perfect, the, the side clone of the D5. It's perfect, it's sturdy, it's tough, it's weather built, it's sealed. It has everything I need for wildlife photography. And the files are unbelievable. But there's so many different birds here. Here you can play with reflections, you know. Sometimes we get so focused on the animal, again, we miss some of the neat things, like the reflections. Like, oh, look at this little, this guy here, oh yeah. This autofocus system is the bomb. Look at, oh yes, beautiful. Look at that. But those images I'm showing you, for everyone I'm showing you, there are a hundred of them that were terrible. Okay, uh, one of the greatest gifts that we have now in this era, which I didn't have when I started, is digital photography. I mean, you know how much money I threw away on film? I used to say, you know, and you get 36, maybe if you're lucky, 38 images to a roll. Okay, I shoot that in two seconds now, in two seconds. And you know what, if the file is ugly, you got the delete button, it's beautiful. I didn't have any of that. So now, what I tell people is, listen, shoot away. I know there's a lot of people that, that use the term spray and pray. Okay, when you go in these burst modes. But you know what, with wildlife, I encourage that. If you see a behavior starting to happen, man, put the hammer down, just da -da 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 -da, shoot away. Because for me, when I get back, if I'm out in the field shooting these behaviors, I don't try to chimp that much. I try to look to make sure I'm getting the right exposure, but I'm not gonna go through all my images. But then when I get back to camp or I get back to my office, depending when I'm out in the field shooting, and I start going through the images, it's like opening gifts at Christmas. Because the camera sees things that you never saw. Especially when you're shooting at a frame rate, 10, 12, you know, frames per second, you get there and all of a sudden you'll see a, a cat like, with, the, with the lip up, the eye open, a split second that you never would have seen, but your camera caught it. So you get to pick the best out of your, your bursts of, of, of motion there, you get those behaviors. The key thing for wildlife photography is to know your models. Just like any, you know, a fashion photographer is going to have to get to know his model, get to know her or his personality to find out how they're going to get the best expressions out of them, right? Well, knowing your wildlife, knowing their natural behaviors, you can anticipate those behaviors and you can be ready for the shot. So that's what I try to do. And I spray and pray a lot. It's, it's just the way you're going to catch the shot that you need. Birds flying at you. You know, a bird has different wing movements and you want to get that perfect wing movement. You're not going to, listen, there are those guys. I know those guys because I've had them a couple of times come up, you know, where they see me go out there and shoot, doo -doo 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 -doo, and they look at me and they go, that's spray and pray. When you're a real photographer, you'll know the, the right time to put down the, like the shutter. Pose, exactly. For hours, stack, like. yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, I rarely use a tripod because I've got to be able to point, to me, I don't hunt, but I understand the thrill of hunting because that's what I'm doing with my camera. And that's what I urge people to do. If you love wildlife, if you love hunting, get your camera, go out there and hunt. And when you find that animal, boom, you catch your trophy, you hang it up on your wall and the trophy walks away. This is the beauty of wildlife photography. You're a pretty girl. Yes, you are. Look at that beautiful side light. It's like a portrait. We have a portrait of you, girl. Yes, it is. I try to tell people all the time, you know, if you're into wildlife photography, you don't have the, the budget to go to a place like Africa. Your local zoo is one of the best places to come and practice your photography. You can learn about animal behaviors. Okay, Mabel, here you go, girl. There you go. You can learn about animal behaviors. You can really practice your style. You can practice your compositions. You can learn different things. You know, the, 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 the great beauty that we have with digital photography is that that LCD can be one of your best teachers. You know, look at your framing, look at your light. It, it tells you everything kind of instantaneously. Um, and Another key thing to understand is when you're shooting, you know, what are your backgrounds? I always tell people all the time, look at you, now here I can get a great shot. If I were to use a long lens and shoot her in the background, I've got that acacia tree and that baobab in the background, who's to say you're at a zoo? Um, these are the things you practice and you pay attention to. I think one of the biggest mistakes we make as wildlife photographers, a lot of times is we get so focused on the animal, we lose the background. I mean, as a photographer, this is not a job. It's a passion. You're out here, you're observing these animals, you're learning about them, you're connecting to them. Every time you press that shutter, that exact moment will never happen again. And that's the beauty of still photography. You're preserving something there for always. You're a good girl, Peggy. Good girl. Okay. We're going to go now. We're going to see the draft. Here you go, Mabel. All right, girls. Thank you. There are different options here. When you come out to an exhibit and you have giraffe far away, you can take out your long glass and you can press it, get some nice telephoto shots with the zebras in the background. But if you have an opportunity to get an animal like this up close, take out your wide angle lens. You know, 
Look at different options, different perspectives. Don't do what everybody else. Oh, look at the baby's nursing. Come on, oh, this is so beautiful. It's like early morning. This is, oh God, I can't believe this is my job. What are you doing, hey, Malcolm? That's a good boy. That's a good boy, Malcolm, huh? Show us that tongue, show us that tongue, show us that tongue. No, no, show, oh, oh show. Zoo. Zoo presents a lot of different options. Um, we have animals spread out in different areas. Again, you want to be aware of your backgrounds, whether you're going to make it a vertical, you're going to make it a horizontal. Sometimes giraffe will extend their neck out like this guy is extending his neck. If you're shooting that from the side, it makes a great horizontal. Most giraffes look at people and people think it's an automatic vertical shot, but you can do some really neat horizontals. You can take a lens, a long lens here and compress this and get that eye and just get all the pattern behind it. Uh, just different perspectives. There's so many options, but again, that's the great thing about a zoo is that you can practice these things. So if you are lucky enough to get out into the wild, do a real safari, you've got a lot of practice under your belt. Isn't that right, buddy? And I tend to shoot, when I'm shooting animals, I tend to shoot at aperture priority wide open. So I can focus on the animal and the background kind of gets blurred out. It also tends to give me my fastest shutter speed, so I tend to get the sharpest image. But you can play with the light a lot here. You know, you've got those animals over there in the shade um, and all the zebras in the back. Zebras are always great because you've got all those lines. They're so graphic. I said the great thing about this kind of photography is you sit out here all day and you see different behaviors throughout the day. In Africa, you can go out there and, uh, you know, now with these cameras that can shoot at 6,000, 10,000 ISO, you can go out there and just with the spotlight that the rangers use, you can get some really good shots. Everything from porcupines to aardvarks, of course the buffalo, lions, things that are active at night, you get some really wonderful interesting shots. So here you get that background with that tree behind you, it's just, it's a beautiful exhibit. You can shoot a compress it, get the zebras behind, you can shoot the zebras between the legs of the giraffe. Uh, you can get out here and just be so creative and have so much fun because it's changing. It's, it's like being in Africa in many ways. I tend to shoot my ISOs fairly high, really below 800, yeah. because the quality of this stuff now is just amazing. It's not, you know, back in the beginning, 400 film, you got some grain. Now, 3,200 ISOs is like the old 400 film. So I tend to keep that uh, fairly high to give me a good, good shutter speed, aperture priority to try to keep it nice and blurry in the background, focus on the subject. Of course that changes, or you're doing landscapes and stuff, but I tend to do more animal portrait type photography. Um, I'm going to change lenses here because I'm going to have an opportunity to get really close to this Galapagos tortoise and it's going to enable me to get different perspectives. I can get close up to them, get underneath them and get that wide angle perspective. It's not an animal that I have to stay far away from. So when you can get close to an animal, take out that wide angle lens, it gives you a great different perspective. Come on, now you got to stick your head out, buddy. There you go. Okay. Now chew that and I'm going to scratch your neck, stick it out. Oh yeah. Oh, does that feel good? Yes, it does. It feels great, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But he'll stay in a trance like this for a while, so then you can get your wide angle lens and you can get right in here and you just look at his eye. Oh yeah. Get that focus on the eye and get down low. And... Oh yeah. And then straight on like this. Get that great perspective of him. Make sure your background's here again. Oh, look at this. It distorts it in a way that's actually kind of neat. And then if you want to get down low, these great cameras, you can flip up your little thing here and you look at them a little like this. Oh. Wildlife has infinite opportunities and uh, all of them can make you happy. And then you got the face of E.T. You ever see E.T.? Look, E.T. going home. There you go, good catch. Ready, Sammy? You ready? Who loves you, Sammy? I do, you're right. Good catch, Sammy, good catch. Now this is perfect film. See now, I gotta get my, my camera here because here is great light for something like a chimpanzee. You want them in a nice flat shade like this so you get the expressions on their face. Oh yeah, 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 this is beautiful. Oh, oh my gosh, this is, this, is, this is perfect. You get every wrinkle, you get every hair, no hard shadows, you get to see those beautiful brown eyes. Niger, Niger, give me another look, buddy. Oh my God, he's such a good looking chimp. It's beautiful. So that's where well, you don't want that hard sunshine. First of all, black animals are gonna enhance those shadows, make them even more drastic. There you go, Niger. But the challenge here is to find things. So I think that's one of the great, it's one of the great examples of practice that you can have in wildlife photography. There are over 400 birds in here, and you may see 20, 30, 40, but there are 400. So you gotta look for them. In, a, in an exhibit like this, 
you know, what I would do is I wouldn't concentrate as much on just getting the portrait of the bird close up. Here I would use a wider angle lens, maybe a medium focal length lens, because you want to show an environment here. You want to show this beautiful tropical environment. This is what all zoo exhibits should be. This is not an exhibit of birds. This is an exhibit of an environment. Um, and that's what you want to show. And a lot of wildlife photography think sometimes we don't take advantage of the environment we're in. We're so focused on the animal, we don't look at the beautiful environment that it lives in. And I think that's just as important. As a matter of fact, today it's even more important because without the environment, we can't have the animal. Great, you get in in the early morning light, you get that great backlighting, that great little rim lighting that outlines the bird. It's just very peaceful in here. Like I said, this is like medicine for me. You come in here and it's just, mm. See, and then you get the light that's actually bouncing off the water onto the bottom of the duck. I try to tell people too, you know, when you do have a bit of an obstruction like this right here, you can shoot right through this. If you put your lens right up to it, you open up your aperture, you won't ever see it. It'll be like you're shooting with nothing there. The hornbill's on the top there. So if I were to go, you know, they're, they're the story of my life in a lot of ways and the things that I've been very lucky to do. Again, some kid from a Cuban immigrant dad, uh, didn't have a lot to start with. Uh, my parents did an amazing job of giving my sister and I a tremendous opportunity, but you know, the reality is we, we were not affluent people by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't have tons of money, but I got tons of wonderful experiences and uh, you know, nobody's promised tomorrow but every frame on this camera will be promised tomorrow. <laughs> oh, look, look, look. I love when they do that. You know what? Get a job you love and never work a day in your life. Hey, I want to take this opportunity to thank my friends at Sammy's for coming out here to Miami to film this wonderful piece out here. Hopefully it inspires you to not only enjoy and appreciate wildlife, but to pick up a camera and create wildlife images of your own. Every day it's something different. They surprise you. The only thing predictable about them is that they're unpredictable. So go to Sammy's.com, find out all this wonderful equipment that's available to you to inspire you to get out and make memories of your own.